This is Multimedia J Radio Style, a podcasty thing chock full of opinions. Hope you can handle it. Multimedia J Radio Style. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who may have forgotten, this is what a voice coming from an actual human being sounds like. (laughs) I have the distinct impression that there's people out there that think that I've completely lost it. So I need to hop on the microphone to talk about that at least. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Multimedia J Radio Style for Wednesday, March 1st, 2017. And the question of the day is, have I lost my mind? Because I've been doing Plotagon cartoons for the past couple of days. There's some very good explanations for some of that. The most blatant is that, of course, Plotagon's a pretty fun program. I wanted to experiment with some animation this year by whatever means are necessary, and... This program is basically the spiritual successor to Extra Normal. Those of you that remember the Extra Normal cartoons from years ago, yeah, there would always be these two goofy 3D characters with the computer voices talking to each other. That is where Plotagon picks up. Except there's a bit more options available in terms of emotes and little tricks and things like that. And what I've really been having fun with is combining the Plotagon program with my actual video editor to add effects that Plotagon doesn't support out of the box. So some of the fancier stuff like the flashback scene I've done in one of the cartoons is basically uh, is basically me taking liberties via converting things and adding more effects via other programs. Although Plotagon does let you make basic cartoons out of the box, and they even have a miniature version of YouTube that you can upload those cartoons to. That's all Plotagon cartoons. But what I'm doing here is basically I'm a multimedia nerd, Uh, If I have the opportunity to come up with some weird effect via some weird hack job way of mixing programs together, I want to try that. I just hope that the Plotagon folks don't have a problem with that. But I have found some precedents, so to speak, in terms of people uploading those kinds of videos to YouTube. There are videos out there that are basically Plotagon cartoons where they did something like this. So I've seen them before. So in terms of being consistent, if, if, say, the Plotagon folks had trouble, had a problem with me doing this... They can let me know, but I'm going to want to know why certain other videos are around on the site, if that's the case. But hey, it's free publicity, and I figure I might as well plug the program every single time before folks are like, dude, did you animate all that? No, I used a program, but uh, actually, I tried Extra Normal at one point during the Extra Normal days, and I found it too limited. It's kind of like what Go Animate has become, where too much stuff is behind a paywall. I mean, and the reason why that happens is monetization and scaling what the product is. The folks behind Go Animate want to be able to sell this product to big businesses that want to make that that can make training videos or something out of those cartoons. And of course, there's a lot of characters with the Seth MacFarlane style to them and things along those lines. But that's Plotagon's chief rival nowadays is Go Animate. But I like Plotagon. I'm using Plotagon Story, the non-education version. There's also a version of Plotagon that's for teachers and has like a subscription fee for like 30 students a year or something like that for making like cartoons to talk about lesson plans or something along those lines. But I went straight for Plotagon Story, the non-school version of Plotagon that basically it's like a free-to-play video game. You get a lot of stuff for free. There's more stuff you can download for free. And then there's microtransactions for things. Things like more characters, more settings, things along those lines. I think it's a good model because it lets you get your feet wet and decide on your own later to buy certain upgrades to get more features. But it's not like you're not hardly going to be able to do anything because you haven't bought the program. Like, like like what I see with like the Go Animate trial or something along those lines. So it's the business model that's the big reason why I'm having so much fun with this program. And I do intend on buying some of the assets from their digital store to add them to my Plotagon installation and have even more fun with this program. There's a lot that we need to talk about. and But let's talk about this Plotagon stuff first because that's probably where most of the head scratches are coming from. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, World of the Nerd Couple is my tacky internet cartoon answer to satirical allegory and soap operas. It's an ongoing story with a cast of characters. Some will come and go as the story progresses. However, the genre right now making fun of soap 
soap operas because the more I played around with this program, the more it reminded me of a darn soap opera. You know, you, the young and the restless and the big four are left. But I used to, oh man, when I was growing up, I had sitters. I went over sitters' houses after school or they came over my house, one of those two. But... When I was growing up, I had sitters, and those sitters watched soap operas. The target demographic of soap operas was usually women. They tried to get young women, but as more women went into the workplace and weren't home between 12 and 3, there eventually the demographics got older, similar to what happened with Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, back in the 90s, now a textbook example of a show that's doing well that gets canceled simply because it appeals to groups of people with less disposable income, and therefore the ad rates aren't as high and all that lovely television stuff. But that's the that's the situation the soap operas have found, found their way in. And, you know, I actually did have some old lady sitters back in the day who, 12 to 3, forget it. The Young and the Restless, The Bold and the Beautiful, Guiding Light, and then Oprah came on at 4. Woohoo! Uh, and people wonder why I'm not really the kind of person who watches a lot of TV. It's the way I was raised. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I gotta watch my stories. Don't change the channel, I'm trying to watch my stories. Go play video games somewhere else, I gotta watch my stories. <laughs> oh boy. So yes, me and soap operas, we go way back. I remember the 80s and 90s themes for guiding light as the world turned. I remember the 90s stuff the most because that's when I encountered the most of it when I was growing up and going to sitters' houses. So, And, of course, I had that thing on Twitter earlier with the 90s theme from guiding light, getting it stuck in my head once again after decades of never hearing it. Who, brother? The things that stick in your head after you've had your childhood affected by them. So... <laughs> I'm actually thinking of getting my tablet and making the ni the 90s theme to Guiding Light my ringtone and see if anybody around the office recognizes it if I randomly play it in the break room or something. Oh my goodness, that's an old soap opera theme, right? Oh man, we don't like soap operas at the 9 to 5. When The Young and the Restless is on, we change the channel. And we actually snapped a very hilarious picture from one uh, holiday meal where we didn't get the chance to change the channel before the manager started serving food. And there's this rather hilarious picture of three supervisors and managers smiling ear to ear in Santa hats and holiday garb while I think it was Melody, not Melody Thomas, Scott, one, wait, uh, one of the one of the folks on The Young and the Restless is red faced, teary eyed, crying her eyes out. So the picture is literally three guys in Santa suits and their hats and stuff smiling ear to ear for the camera while the television behind them has this soap opera lady who's bawling her eyes out. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> well, the thing is, if you learn about how that genre actually amounted to something, soap operas, uh, they were meant to fill in a time slot that wasn't very attractive otherwise. Ooh, 12 to 3. But then, hey, if there was a way to sell advertising to folks who were home at the time, like stay-at-home moms and housewives, and Procter & Gamble could pony up some cash, and this portion of Guiding Light is brought to you by Tide. <laughs> so... All the way back, way the heck back, to when I first had sitters when I was a little kid, I've been familiar with soap opera. So, needless to say, I've got me some demons to exorcise, so to speak, figuratively, blah, blah, blah. And basically, I'm making fun of soap operas as part of what I'm doing with this tacky, ongoing story in uh, World of the Nerd Couple. But once I've gotten my fill of getting revenge and booyahing soap operas, the ultimate genre for World of the Nerd Couple is going to be satirical allegory. Most folks know what satire is. Allegory is a literary term for something that's opining on something else through being the piece of literature that it is. So basically what happens with that is the classic one that I grew up with was Arthur Miller's The Crucible. It's a play that takes place in the time period of the Salem Witch Trials. However... The, from what I understand, unless the English teacher that taught my classes back then was taking liberties with the whole thing, the actual play 
was social commentary on the McCarthyist commie hunts of the 50s. So instead of witch hunts, you're talking about commie hunts and stuff along those lines. So McCarthyism in the 50s, that's what the the crucible is supposed to be social commentary for, if I've got everything, all my ducks in a row here. So yeah, that's what an allegory is. It's a something that talks about something else via literature. And in this case, with this cartoon goofball thing that I'm playing around with, it's a fictitious story that chimes in on things related to technology, things related to business. I've been spending a lot of time making fun of corporate nonsense lately with uh, Dan Dan the Numbers Man and Tom's brush with HR. But ultimately, as more things hit the news and stuff, what I'm looking to do with this series is instead of doing some kind of rant video or something about or something like that, if I don't feel like getting on the mic and talking about it radio style, hence the name of the podcast, if I don't feel like doing something like this, I want to weave that into the story for these characters and basically that's a lot of these characters are based on people that i people that i've worked with or read about or something like that and in the case of hr there were a lot of liz ryan articles that inspired that and i've worked with a lot of dan dan the numbers mans over the years so yeah people that think that numbers do everything even when their context is completely stripped away so yes i am making fun of stuff and if you want to have some fun see if you can find out what i'm making fun of i've made some passing references to stuff you may recognize from stuff I've ranted about with technology or other stuff in some of this lately. But right now, I'm kind of just getting used to it all, playing with the effects and making fun of random stuff. So uh, please knock it off with the crap views, folks. <laughs> this is like gaming video hate 2.0. Yeah, and this is something that we need to talk about because you look at what happened with Heel versus Babyface. He got burnt out on World of Warcraft tried to change his gaming channel to gaming videos about other stuff. Everything tanked because people are so prissy that they'll just completely stop watching you if you change even the tiniest thing. And now he does all stream highlights, and people are like, why is it that all you're doing is stream highlights? Well, why wouldn't he? I mean, he tried to do something different on his channel, and his prissy audience abandoned him. Twitch got better than YouTube, and now his YouTube channel is the dumping ground for highlights from his Twitch streams. You have nobody to blame but yourself, folks. Those of you that have complained about it, if anyone in this audience has complained about what Az has done to his channel, it's it's always hilarious how people ignore the possibility that they may have contributed to why someone is the way they are. If Az doesn't have a compelling reason to do stuff with his channel like he used to and just bring things over from Twitch, then and he's just going to bring things over from Twitch, you got to wonder what caused that. You know, at the 9 to 5, I'm going around talking about how these business types are always like, ah, oh, root cause analysis, we always got to find the root reason why stuff happens, except when it comes to human behavior. In that case, run for the warnings, run for the terminations, run for the discipline, and just slap people with the hammer. Bureaucracy! Whatever. By the way, making fun of corporate bureaucracy is something that I intend on doing quite a bit with these cartoons. But at the very same time, we will be making fun of technical stuff as well. But just don't judge these cartoons by their cover. They will have titles or something, but they may not explicitly say, for example, that I'm making fun of something related to Intel processors or AMD or NVIDIA or something along those lines. So it is an ongoing story. But I don't intend on having the problems like that soap operas have where you have to have been following the story for years and years to have a clue what's going on. I don't want the drama to get that nuts. So, so yes, I'm making fun of soap operas by doing this, but it's not going to be as you need to wrap yourself up in the show in order to know what's going on as most soap operas are. So, and uh, there probably won't be as much drama. It's not like the computer voices that these actors use can actually do anything can actually flip out as much as real people so but that's the story you've got plotagon is kind of like a guilty pleasure of a hobby for me it is a lot more fun than i thought it would be and i think i will have this going as a regular series as far as the other stuff is concerned the changes that have been made are the changes that will be made wacky world of multimedia j is going to resemble greenham gaming a little more and things along those lines and i am also interested in geek house living which will of course uh, be more for the mainstream audience and things along those lines i'm just curious what it would take to get another 
another washer, you know, Magic Chef portable washer, Magic Chef portable dryer going amongst the mainstream crowd and whatnot, since I did happen to impress a bunch of people over the last year with those two uploads. That being said, I did take YouTube's answer to like a big corporate anonymous survey and blasted the crap out of their lack of promotion of smaller channels. Because the experience on here continues to be a perennial disappointment. I mean, we're seeing what happened with Heel vs. Babyface, and it's not to say I haven't thought about doing the same thing. But really, the black hole of YouTube is something that Google needs to address. The reason why this site became what it is, is because you could start something small and make it into something and gain an audience. There have been attempts to make all corporate versions of what YouTube has been, and, uh, well, they're either behind paywalls now or they don't exist anymore. They never really gained the traffic that this site has gained. And that's why I constantly bring up the, the grassroots of the site, so to speak. And that's why they need to support smaller channels a lot more and not have the situations like what I've seen where there's such a high percentage of the views going to the top 0.1% of channels that you pretty much have no chance any other way. My continued involvement here depends entirely on whether I feel like it's worth it, whether it actually is or not. And that is something that YouTube's public relations folks should be all over, because how many people out there act on how they feel rather than what the actual facts are? Quite a bit. It's kind of the situation that many times human beings fall into the trap of that. But if YouTube wants to gain in a community or, or maintain their community, they will have to pay attention to that if they don't want to end up as the next MySpace. This is also dependent upon conditions, and this is, for those of you that have been listening, now you get to know the real reason why I've been doing all these cartoons. I have been having severe problems at the Geek House with quiet enjoyment. The warm spell made for some nice weather here in southern New England, but no bugs yet. So, a lot of the property owners in the neighborhood that want to fix up their properties have had power tools going, hammers, trucks pulling in and out... And then there were problems with there was one person because of the warm weather, they, weather, they were away from the house all day and they left their windows open and their dog who barks at everything that moves was sitting in the window barking at everything that moved. And the Hicktown dog rule took effect. The minute some the minute one dog starts barking their head off, the other dogs hear that dog. They start barking, too. So if you can imagine two days last weekend where things could randomly go from nice and quiet to for 10 minutes straight that's what it was like and i wasn't the only one who was annoyed by that it was just there was this one person who was away and left their window open the dog was perched in the window barking at every car that went by well not every car that went by, but people that pulled into the driveway of that house people that it's just, and suddenly we'd go from normal nice somewhat quiet some cars here and there maybe a loud motorcycle to every dog on the street <laughs> Oh, man. Now, I come from a hick town. I know a thing or two about the chain reaction of dogs all barking at each other. But this was the more this was definitely a more extreme example. So that's another thing, too. And a lot of these things that I'm doing lately, like the Greenham inspired format, they're less dependent upon things needing to stay quiet while I'm filming the footage. I just got to carve out a time to get the dialogue recorded for things along those lines. And that'll be one of the advantages of some of these things. Same thing with the Plotagon cartoons. But this more produced stuff has more options. It doesn't all have to come together at once and the conditions need to stay perfect for it. But uh, unfortunately, I am at the point where I'm thinking of moving again. I it's kind of it's a flip of a coin, just like everything else I'm dealing with right now, like the nine to fivers, that whole mess has become a flip of a coin and summer's coming. That is when a lot of the volume picks up. So if I want to change warehouses or companies where I'm involved with their warehouse team, that's when uh, that's when it would be the time to go get my name out there and head around and see what pops up. Same thing with other stuff as well. We're in a dull period of the year right now now but hey new job might mean having to move so yeah, but either or it's just you know nothing lasts forever and i'm open to the idea of possibly moving again but before i did that of course i would make the recycling runs matter of fact the next vacation i take there will be some more great sift recycling runs and i will actually start considering getting rid of the furniture too that's kind of handed me down in favor of something that's a bit more portable 
So a lot of things to consider, particularly if I am thinking of moving. But there's a lot of options available. There's not a lot of options available. I mean, but uh, there's a lot of things that could change this year. This year, 2017, 500th anniversary of the Lutheran Reformation. It's been all about change from the very beginning. So everything, as far as I'm concerned, is on the table. The channel is going to change. Other things are going to change. I may rearrange the furniture in the house and try something new. There will be changes this year. The question is what changes and when. But for now, I want to play around with Plotagon and make some more cartoons and get them back to being more tech focused. I've been making fun of snooty bureaucratic corporate crap for a bit. But there's a couple of technical things that I can think of uh, episodes for. Plus, it would be nice if the character who's kind of like an avatar of me could actually make an appearance before the end of the show. We focused heavily on the office nonsense that Lauren puts up with up to this point. But I don't want her and that fiery red hair of hers to steal the show. <laughs> it's supposed to be world of the nerd couple, not world of the nerd lady. And uh, trying to get some more stories interwoven together and chime in on technical issues indirectly, of course, will be a focus for that series. I'm making fun of soap operas right now, and I'm making fun of corporate boilerplate crap right now, but expect that to change. Thanks for listening, everybody. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.